So I'll be introducing what is 8-bit. 8-bit is an 8-bit color graphics. Uh, it is a method of storing image information in computer memory or in an image file. Then what is an 8-bit system? In a computer architecture, 8-bit integers memory address or other data units are those that are 8 bits or 1 octet wide. Also, 8-bit CPU and ALU architectures are those that are based on registers, address buses, or data buses of that size. So, what is the control unit or what is control unit? The control unit is a component of computer central processing unit that directs the operation of the processor. It does the computer memory, arithmetic, logic unit, and input and output devices how to respond to a program's instructions. Uh, hi, um, we'll be explaining the uh, instruction set of the CPUs uh, that is uh, 8-bit in accordance with the data bus and consists of a 3-bit opcode and a 5-bit address code. Uh, for the sets of instruction opcode, uh, uh, we, we have HALT000, skip of 0, and uh, the 3 bit is 001, add 010, and 011, XOR 100, load 101, store 110, jump 111. So for the instructions with opcode, uh, the decoder consists of an opcode decoder that is the above control signals after decoding the, that opcode. All the eight instructions uh, that I've said earlier have the same instructions, word length, and the same time cycles. The fetch cycle for all the instructions are the same. The execution cycle differs from instruction to instruction, but the execution time length is the same for all eight instructions. This property in which the instruction length and the instruction time cycles are same is inherent quality of the RISC processors. Whatever instruction is taken, it completes in exactly 80 states. The fetch cycle takes 40 states and execution cycle uh, another 40 states respectively. And for the instructions, for the fetch cycle, uh, the program counter's contents are loaded onto the address bus cycle with the fetch cycle high. The, then the PC out is selected by the address multiplexer and its contents are transferred to the address bus. Uh, the address bus points the memory location in the memory where the the AND micro instruction is stored. The decoder generates a memory a read signal and the micro instruction is read and placed on the onto the data bus and transferred to the IR. The LDIR loaded instructions is initi initiated by the decoder. The program cover is incremented by the INC signal of the decoder. So for the ex ex execution processes, uh, I will be explained by my teammate Dio. Next instruction would be XR instruction. Here, the operand brings available to the ALU the required arithmetic operation is carried out. If the result of the operation is zero, the zero flag will be set. Otherwise, the data will be stored in the accumulator. The next one is load instruction. Here, the operand brings available to ALU output simply acts as a buffer in which the opcode is a load instruction. Then the data gets loaded into the accumulator when the decoder issues the LDACC signal. Store instruction. Here, the memory location of the result to be stored is pointed out by the address pass, and the decoder issues a write signal. Thus, the contents of the data bus written onto the particular location and thus the data is stored. Lastly, the jump instruction. The decoder issues a load PCL enabling the 5-bit content of the address P, to be loaded into the PC replacing its previous contents. In sync with the rising edge of the clock pulse, 
Then the PC will now point to a new location in the memory. I'm Karl Mabunay. I will discuss the data flow of our CPU. To read an instruction, the contents of the program counter are transferred to the address lines. The, pro the program counter, its input comes from the clock generator. To read an instruction, you will need the fetch signal set to high. And the address multiplexer chooses the counters of the program counter to be loaded onto the address bus. As soon as the contents of the program counter are loaded onto the address bus, a memory read cycle is initiated and the instruction is read from the location pointed out by the address lines and the micro instruction code is placed onto the data bus. The program counter is incremented to point to the next micro instruction in the memory location of the control memory. The data bus transfers the micro instruction to the instruction register. It has two fields in two different formats, namely opcode data operand and opcode address of data operand. During the first case, the opcode is given to the ALU and decoder for decoding and a series of micro operations are generated. The data operand is loaded on the data bus and transferred to the ALU for its respective micro operations as, as specified by its opcode. In the second case, the address of the data operand is loaded onto the address bus and the memory cycle is initiated. Here, the memory location in the main memory specified by the address lines is read, and the data is transferred onto the data bus and thus given the ALU to undergo the operation specified by its opcode. The result of the ALU are stored in the accumulator. Data operations will be combined with the memory contents and the accumulator, and the result is transferred back to the accumulator. The function of the NOR gate is that whenever all inputs are low, the output will be high, and at all other times remains low. It is attached to the tri-state buffer when the tri-state buffer is enabled. The data from ALU is fed to the memory, thus allowing the data to be stored into the memory. The function of the NOR gate is that whenever all inputs are low, the output will be high, and that all other times remains low. It is attached to tri-state buffer. When the tri-state buffer is enabled, the data from ALU is fed to the memory, thus allowing the data to be stored into the memory. When disabled, the data is given to all and cut off from being written into the data bus. Whenever the result is a zero in the ALU, a zero flag is set. So I'm John Hazard Rasilao. I'm discussing about the results. So the results of the CPU, the 8-bit CPU, will be the creation of a RAM, multiplexer, an instruction register, and the ALU and the coder, and the accumulator in the clock. So the RAM used is a 2, two raised to 5 equals to a 32 byte memory. So the instructions were an add and and a jump. So the opcode for the add be The AND will be 3. And the jump will be. So the clock, the result of the clock, we've come up with the positive clocks for all of the objects here. So the main clock, clock 1, clock 2, and fetch. So clock two will be dependent of clock uh, clock one, and clock uh, clock two will give the signal for fetch. So all of the clocks used here is a positive clock. So I will show to your screen the results.
So the results shown, we have populated the RAM. The RAM is a 5-bit address, which in total will be 32 bytes. So the one that showed in your screen, we populated the 5-bit address with random numbers. So thank you for watching our presentation. So we are group four and we are presenting eight bit CPU. I am Chris Dana M. Padilla. And I'm Errol S. Padilla. I'm Carl Jason Mabunay. I'm Norman David M. Tinky.